Hey, don't you love the way organ music echoes through your church every Sunday morning? It sounds great, doesn't it? Let's go now to Ottawa, Tennessee. I want you to meet a group of organ makers who have really hit the right note. Christ Church in Chattanooga is home to one of the finest organs in the country, made by one of the finest organ makers in the world. Richard Fouts, organ maker, with headquarters in this unpretentious shop in Ottawa. We have almost identical goals, but we think pretty much 180 degrees different from each other, and it makes an ideal partnership. It certainly seems to. Bruce Fouts and Ralph Richards find themselves in a very impressive club, one of only five organ makers in the U.S. who still make organs by hand. We like the fact that a lot of what we're doing is 14th and 15th century technology. By 1470, everything that we do was already invented uh, and developed extremely well, including the alloys that they used. They knew which alloys would stand up, which ones wouldn't. The mechanical systems, they knew how to do them. And it relates to, you know, we always say engineering 101 is the KISS principle, which is keep it simple, stupid. And Virtually the simpler the technology, the greater the chance it has of lasting, and the easier it is for anyone. We have janitors at churches who can fix an organ. So simple technology lasts. The two have known each other since the 1970s. Bruce settled in Ottawa after putting in an organ at Southern Adventist University. A few years later, Ralph left Seattle to come here too. We have some of the most talented organ builders from around the world. We've been very lucky to assemble this group here in Ottawa. But during the winter of 2010, the crew was busy working on an organ like no other, one that gave birth to one of the most iconic musical pieces ever written. Handel's Messiah, composed on this circa 1700 organ St. George's Hanover Square in London, a church so full of history. The church was built in 1724. Handel became a member in 1725. King George I went there for three years until his death. Um, famous, famous people were wardens, like Cornwallis was one of the wardens there. They don't like to think about that. But um, the church also became, from the very beginning, known as a wedding chapel for the upper classes. One year in the early 19th century, they had over 1,000 weddings in a single year, nine of them on Christmas Day. It's also the only American president that was married outside of the United States was Teddy Roosevelt, and he was married at this church. They did a worldwide search, and they went throughout Europe and played instruments, and then they came to the U.S. and played our and most of our competitors' instruments, and they selected us after they played our instrument at Duke University. So we feel very honored. The organ's casing stayed intact, but the painstaking job to rebuild the interior took two years. The proof is in the pudding. You know, they'll be playing it and, you know, testing all of the mechanism and the sounds and, you know, it's not a Porsche until, you know, it's a Porsche. <laughs> Both men fell in love with the organ as children. Bruce from taking lessons as a kid in Salt Lake City, and for Ralph, like so many, the emotions of the music brought him comfort that's lasted a lifetime. Actually, the, the real start um, when I was seven, it was my brother's funeral, and we went to a different church that had a pipe organ. And I remember, that's the only thing I remember, is uh, a pipe organ. And uh, we changed churches, eventually went there, and uh, Spent a vacation at some friend's house and taught myself to play two keyboards and a pedal board in a week. And suddenly people were pushing me to do that. And uh, eventually I went to Oberlin College, studied organ and harpsichord performance. While I was there, I met a lot of organ and harpsichord builders. And uh, it was a way that I could put my interest in science, math, and music all together. So I was 21 and I said, why not start a company? Shakespeare once said, if music be the food of love, play on. And while Richards and Fouts may not be the composers, they certainly are music 
preservers. And so the music plays on for the rest of us to enjoy. For more information about these beautiful works of art, go to richardsfolks.com. When we come back, we'll tell you the story of the Hickson Flight Museum as Southern Snapshot continues. <laughs>